So I'm often amazed at how much people don't know about some of the common hand tools that we all use. I'm talking about hammers, screwdrivers, tape measures, the stuff that everybody has in a drawer or a toolbox somewhere. People frequently overlook the fundamental functions of these tools. So in honor of a fresh start in 2021, I'm gonna run down 21 of these little hand tool tips, tricks, and secrets. Now, if you're a professional tradesperson or an experienced DIYer, you probably already know most of these. But this is the stuff that new DIYers and homeowners often miss altogether. They're gonna come at you fast, so keep your eyes peeled. And remember, I'll link these tools down in the description below. So if you need anything after the video, just check down there. All right, here you go. 21 hand tool secrets coming up next on The Honest Carpenter Show. Number one, tape measure tabs are supposed to wiggle. Everyone always thinks that their tape measure is broken when this tab moves. It's not, it's supposed to move. This is because the tab itself has an actual thickness. When you push it against something to make a measurement, the tab adds itself to that measurement. When you pull it on something, it subtracts itself from the measurement. It's moving to keep your numbers accurate. This is called tab travel and it's calculated in during manufacturing. Number two, tape measure tabs can also be used for quick marking. If you're pulling measurements, you'll often draw the tape out and make a dash with the pencil. But in some cases, you can just hold the measurement you need at one point, push the tab in and use the tab as a scribe. It'll make a little mark or indentation on its own. You can even do this on the edge of a board. Just brace the tape with your finger at the number you want and scribe with pressure. You can lay out a bunch of numbers really fast this way and it's often easier than using a pencil. There are so many tape measure secrets, I'll do a whole video on it someday, but we'll leave it there for now. Number three, these changeable screwdrivers have six functions, not four. Everyone knows that you can pull the bits out and flip them between number one and number two Phillips and flatheads. But few people realize that if you take the bits out altogether, you have nut drivers. These empty hex sockets can drive quarter inch nuts on one end and 5 16 inch nuts on the other. I've used them many times for pinning gutter screws or turning machine screws. Don't overlook these extra sockets. Also, number four, removable screwdriver bits can be used in drills in a pinch. If you just don't have the Phillips or flathead bit you need, you can pop out one of your screwdriver bits and chuck it into the drill. Tighten it just behind the ball bearing and it'll work like any other bit. This has saved me on a lot of occasions. Just remember to take the bit out and put it back in your screwdriver when you're done or you've got another future headache coming. And number five, you can countersink roughly with just a screwdriver. Countersinking drill bits make a conical depression for a screw to sit in. This really makes driving screws easier and cleaner. But if you don't have a countersink bit, you can get the job done with just a Phillips screwdriver. Again, this is rough, but if you need it, just push the bit into your pilot hole and rotate it aggressively. Roll it around. It'll shape out a divot for a screw head to sit in, especially in softwoods like pine or poplar. This is another thing that has saved me numerous times. Number six, use needle nose pliers to hammer in small nails. Trying to hold small nails with your fingers is just a good way to get your fingers pounded. Instead, pinch the nail with your needle nose pliers. Now you can start the nail with your fingers out of the way. With the nail partly driven, just back the pliers off. No fuss. Also, number seven, needle nose pliers almost always have wire cutters on them. Nearly every set I've ever owned has wire cutters right down here at the base. These are really handy, and they're one of the reasons I always keep needle nose pliers with me. I don't do much electrical, but this is the tool I reach for to cut dead wires fast. Number eight, always hammer nails at 90 degrees to start. If you wanna drive a nail at an angle, like a toe nailing pattern, make your job easier by starting at 90 degrees. Stand the nail up and drive it just enough to get it set. Then use pressure from your fingers to push the nail up and keep it steady while you drive it the rest of the way, eventually pulling back your fingers. This will keep the nail point from skipping over the surface before it bites in. Number nine, use a board to pry nails. If you need to back a nail out, use a thin flat piece of wood as a prying surface. This serves two purposes. Number one, it provides more leverage for the prying angle. Number two, it protects the surface you're prying against. You can just keep a little scrap block about a half inch thick and a few inches square. That should do the trick. Number 10, remember that you can hammer pry sideways. DIYers often overlook this, but if your surface quality doesn't matter, you can get even more aggressive leverage by prying sideways. Some carpenters don't like this, but it will get stubborn nails out faster. Just alternate prying sides. The nail will come out in a squiggly shape. Number 11, combination squares have a secret marker. This little turn knob on the handle of combo squares is actually a scribing tool. It's always where you need it. Just unscrew the knob and use the scribe to mark your layouts with little scratches. You don't even need a pencil, it's built in. Number 12, wrench heads are helpfully angled at 22 and a half degrees. All crescent wrenches and many other wrenches have this offset angle at the head. 
This makes turning bolts and nuts easier. If you're reaching into a weird space and don't have room to maneuver the wrench, just flip it over. The offset head creates a better angle, instantly increasing your leverage and the swing arc of the handle, letting you work in a more comfortable position. Number 13, use a sharp nail set as a drill bit punch. Drilling is always easier if you punch a little hole for the drill bit to notch into. I do this with a sharp nail set because I always have one in my tool belt. Just put the point of your nail set on your drilling mark and give it a quick tap with your hammer. Now your drill bit tip can sit in this hole and it won't wander as you start drilling. If you don't have a nail set, you can do this with a trim nail, but I highly suggest keeping a few nail sets on hand. They're just indispensable. Number 14, your speed square can act as a saw guide. If you need to cross cut a really straight line and don't have a miter saw, just use your speed square. Set the rail against the edge of your board and use the 90 degree leg as a guide for the edge of your circular saw or jigsaw. I just brace the far end with my thumb, pulling forward. You can also use a clamp if that feels better for you. And you can cut even shallower angles. Just line up the angle you need with the lower edge of your board, clamp the square, and once again use the edge as a guide. I just experiment by eye to line up where the speed square should sit. I use this method frequently for fast trim cuts. Number 15. The speed square also makes a great straight edge for knives. If I need to make a short, clean cut on something, I use the speed square as a guide for my utility knife. Just push the rail down on your cut line. Set the blade against the rail and draw across it. This is even better than using flat rollers because it's easier to slip and cut your hand with those. Here, the rail protects your hand because you can get your fingers behind it. And you can scale up with a 12 inch speed square, which we call a buzzard wing. And speaking of utility knives, number 16, they're better than pencils for making cross cuts. Many woodworkers use utility knives to mark their cuts. They do this for two reasons. Number one, it makes sharper lines than a pencil. And number two, it scores the top layer of wood, thereby reducing blowout from the saw. With this top layer already severed, saw blades tend to make cleaner cuts. This works really well on cuts across the grain, plywoods, and hardwoods. Number 17, most pliers have a helpful slip joint. Pliers are great for holding materials and turning or twisting them. I always have a pair in my pouch. But sometimes they can't comfortably grab something that's too thick. That's what this slip joint is for. It spreads the jaws wider so you can grip thicker materials or larger bolts and nuts. If this extra space still isn't enough, then you'll have to bump up the channel locks. But I always carry slip joint pliers in my pouch because they're small and really handy for rough work. Number 18. Use needle nose pliers to help back out a screw. Longer screws will sometimes get stuck in wood and just spin around. This is because they have this threadless area beneath the head. When this area is embedded in wood, there's nothing there to create traction. If you have a screw that's just spinning, Pinch beneath the head lightly with needle nose pliers and lift upward. Do this while backing out the screw. The threads will soon bite and the screw will come right out. Number 19. Screwdrivers can help turn eye bolts. Turning eye bolts and eye screws by hand is a chore. To speed it up, take any longer screwdriver and feed the neck through the eye hole. Then, just swivel the handle around. This gives you all the leverage you need and you often have screwdrivers on hand. This is really helpful with large screwdrivers and bigger eye bolts where you need a lot of force. And speaking of large screwdrivers, number 20, use a large screwdriver for offset nailing. I talked about this in an earlier video which didn't get watched very much, but you can use these larger screwdrivers to drive down nails that your hammer can't reach. If a nail head is poking out somewhere and needs to be tapped in, lay the flat face of the big screwdriver on it. Now, carefully, strike the bar of the screwdriver with the hammer. You can generate enough force to sink it. This actually has hundreds of demolition applications as well. These large screwdrivers are indestructible and they can reach into areas where other tools can't. One of the greatest demo tools ever made. And number 21, use mini hacksaws for tight spaces. This is another criminally overlooked hand tool. Mini hacksaws use full size blades and lockable handles. Often the blade projects from the end of the tool. So if you need to cut a fastener that a big frame hacksaw can't get at, you can carefully saw it or notch it with the open end of your mini hack. Then needle nose pliers can often be used to help break a partially cut fastener. Mini hacksaws, something to always keep around. So that's it, 21 hand tool tips and secrets. There are, of course, thousands of hand tool secrets, and I'll probably do other videos like this in the future, but these were 21 of the most important ones I felt for newcomers to carpentry and DIY. What do you think? Learn anything new? Have anything to add or a different way of doing what I showed? Let me hear about it down in the comments. As I said, these hand tools and others are gonna be linked down in the description. Feel free to browse them. And remember that when you shop through these links, we receive a small commission at no extra charge to you. It helps us keep making videos and we greatly appreciate the support. As always, thanks for watching. Be sure to check back in for more videos coming up soon. 
And please consider subscribing and hitting that little bell button to turn on notifications. That way you'll know the moment we post something. I'm Ethan James with TheHonestCarpenter.com. Thanks for watching everybody and Happy New Year.